Karis Carlin reporting live from the French Senate. Many thanks for that update. With us is uh, Alice uh, Bordassau, head of human rights and gender equality at the uh, FIDH, the International Federation for Human Rights. Thanks for speaking with us here on France 24. Lots to unpack in what's being debated in the Senate. Let's just begin with that last point, this mm -hmm. conscientious objector clause for doctors. Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, this is... Um uh, a last uh, way for uh, the conservative parties to try to um, make this uh, this reform uh, not go into not be a success. I mean, there is a, already the possibility for French doctors to have the consent was closed to say, okay, I won't perform an abortion because it's against my uh, my what I, yeah what I think or my religion. And uh, and there's something specific in the French legis legislation. There is two conscious clause. It, it is written like there is a general conscience clause for doctors and there is one specific for uh, abortion. So there's no need to write it in the constitution. It's just a manner uh, to be sure that, yeah, the vote won't be on the same terms. And then, as your journalist explained, it would be a big problem because then the law has to go again to the National Assembly. So when the president introduces this as an idea to put it in the constitution, it's obviously in reaction to Roe versus Wade. It happened just afterwards. Uh, was it important? What did it, was it the right thing to do? Is it necessary? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's necessary. It was not from the president. It was from parliamentarians at first. Uh, because, yeah, the, the, the Roe vs. Wade uh, reversal was a, was a massive shock uh, everywhere in the world. But uh, even if we are looking to uh, neighbors in Europe, you, we can see that in uh, Poland, in Hungary, in Italy, uh, abortion right is under attacks. And, uh, and we need to, pro to protect it. And uh, it would be... A uh, wonderful symbol to have it uh, written in the French constitution, but it's not only a symbol, uh, it will be like a protection, a legal protection uh, for this right. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, how are abortion rights doing overall here? Uh, is the problem those that are against it? Uh, or just the problem that uh, there are lots of places in France uh, where there's just fewer doctors and so as a result, fewer abortion clinics. Yeah, it's, it, it's both. Um, there's the thing like, it's very difficult in some places in France to get an abortion. If you take the example of uh, Guyane, uh, in Guyane in 90... In, uh, in French Guyana. In French Guyana, yes. Uh, in, uh, in 2019, all of the... 14 gynecologists at the, at, the, at the hospital decided not to perform abortion because it was against their, uh, their conscience. And then it was impossible for women to get abortion in uh, French Guiana, in Cayenne, uh, which is the, 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 the major town. So you can see that there is this, uh, yeah, some doctors decided not to perform abortion. Uh, and in, uh, for other part of France, it's because there is not enough clinics uh, and, uh, and it's difficult for some women to, yeah, to be able to get one. So, Alice Bordassau, uh, there's been a big media storm this week because on one of the Sunday morning uh, talk shows on the, uh, there was a cr Christian conservative who said abortion's the number one cause of mortality in the world, putting it ahead of cancer. So in effect saying an embryo I I is the same as a human life. There's been an outcry, there's been an apology by the television station that aired it, but these kinds of noises, are they increasing? Yeah, we think it's increasing. We can see, we can see that, that this entire rights group and entire choice are becoming louder and louder in France. It's the same in, in other countries. And, uh, and that's why there's, it's a necessity to have this right written in the, in the Constitution. They, they're becoming louder, but yeah. are they getting more traction? Because as you heard Karis Garland say, there's a generation gap on this. Mm -hmm. We can see that some of the conservative uh, parliamentarians uh, are using the same uh, arguments than the entire choice groups, you know. So then you can, you can think about what's the relationship between, uh, between, between them. So the culture wars that happen uh, one ocean away now these days get transcribed to Europe? 
Yeah, yeah, we think, yeah, we can see that definitely. And uh, we can see that those groups that were in the US first was from the Vat Vatican, you know, they say that it was like a, a gender agenda uh, towards Europe. And then in the US, we can see that it's the same one in Brazil. Uh, we have the same in Russia. And it's a, a worldwide uh, movement that's tried to go against women's rights and LGBTQI rights. And uh, we need to open our eyes on it and to fight against those groups that are against human rights, because women's rights are human rights, of course. Uh, w w one final question. You talked about these, these uh, uh, parts of, uh, uh, you, talked to, you gave the example of French Guyana, but uh, uh, here in the, on, the, on the mainland in France, uh, they're, they're, I I is it becoming harder or just harder in those rural areas to, to get an abortion? Is the case in rural areas uh, that what we know is not harder in big cities. If you are a rich woman living in a rich city, it will be easier to get an abortion. But if you are living in a rural areas where you need to take a car and to go to another region to get an abortion, you need to have money for that. And so it's becoming harder uh, in those situations. Alice Bordassar of the uh, International Federation for Human Rights, thanks for being with us. Thanks. Stay with us, there's much more to come, more news plus the day's business and sports.